this speaks to the local economy um, and the state's economy. The state has been criticized as anti-business. What tax policy or other changes would you support to help improve the business climate? Again, I think I think we look. They look at us as anti-business many, many times, and, and it's the Florida and Houston effect. Uh, we've we've had that in our paper again. We just gave Sikorsky <clears throat> a two hundred million dollar uh, payout to keep the jobs here. I'm um, 100 percent for it. I realize what that would have done to our economy if we didn't have those jobs here today. Uh, but and again, this is a, a national issue, and and I'm and we're running for our, uh, you know locally here for our state economy. But if you look in the article, it said that. Uh, we had to come up with this money because they could just as easily go to Houston or Florida to make the very same helicopter for less money. Uh, and again, that will go back to Sikorsky having a, a, a journeyman machinist at $35 an hour. Well, if that job makes its way down to Florida, the very same job, the, the, working on the very same helicopter is a $13 an hour job without a retirement. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it is putting a hole in the plug of a dam is what I see happening. Because our jobs, when I say the erosion of our jobs, that's something that's been happening for the last 30 or 40 years. And they are going to Texas and they are going to Florida. The only problem is when, when there's a population in, in Texas and Florida, a huge population that all receive earned income tax credits. So really, when those jobs leak out of Connecticut and go down to, down to Florida, down to Texas, uh, we are shoring up. And essentially, the jobs we lost with earned income tax credits, with federal uh, welfare, with federal uh, housing acts. Uh, actually, if it even goes back to what we spend on our special education right here in Groton, $22.5 million. Well, the original agreement with, with the federal government was we'd get 50 cents of every dollar for helping these people in special education. Well, the new number is we got $1 million. And that's the kind of the number we've been getting all along since I've been involved in our local government. Uh, I'm sure if Groton was getting another $11 million for their special education, which was promised, and now diverted down south because, well, our, you know, we're, we're a little poorer and they're qualifying for different things. You know, you can't come up from Texas as a governor and say, well, you're too expensive, when the reality is we're lifting up your whole entire workforce down there. It's, it's, it's something I see as clear as day. I think that's part of the conversation we have to change nationally for us to fix our budget up here in Connecticut. Uh, but it's happened, and, and I think that's really – and how, how does that help our economy here locally? Um, and it needs to be uh, – that conversation needs to happen because we can't, have to, we can't have to offer a company that's here that makes good money, $200 million to stay because they're holding us hostage. Because that's just a – that's this helicopter. There's going to be a helicopter 10 years from now, and if – I mean, if Trump got his way and ends the federal minimum wage, completely ends it, uh, Houston could come up to our company right here in Groton and say, Miss Hillary – why would you pay Joe Delacruz $35 an hour when you can come down here to the great state of Texas and pay him $4 for the very same product and the very same work? And that's erosion that has happened over time. Uh, I have a cousin that moved here from Connecticut down to Florida. She's been there working two jobs. She's been there for almost 10 years as CNA up here, uh, making about 15 or 16 an hour. She's down there making 11. And it is a tough job and she works a lot of hours. Well, they just had that hurricane and her fridge went out and she lost all her food. The family got together and sent money down so she could buy food again. So uh, their economy is doing great if you're in that gated community and you retired from a pair and you live down in Florida now. But it's not so great if you're living there trying to make a future for yourself. And I think until we address that, it's going to be very, very hard for us to address our issues here locally because we are supporting the rest of the country, I feel, with our, with our uh, wages. All right, let's give uh, Representative Bumgarner the chance to comment on the question, which is about the characterization of uh, Connecticut being business unfriendly. Um, uh, the, uh, your opponents raised the national context for that. Uh, what do you see as your, your job if you're elected to try to, uh, you know, increase job uh, growth in Connecticut and, and improve that reputation? Well, what does General Electric and uh, Pfizer have in common? Uh, they both packed up a critical part of their operations here in Connecticut and here in Groton um, and moved up to, to Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, why? Certainly you can reference the fact that they have educational institutions such as Harvard, MIT, um, and, and a wealth of other schools where uh, they can pick the best and brightest um, students to become their uh, future employees. 
Um, but I do think there is a lot to be said about the fact that Massachusetts in the last year, with a Republican governor and de a Democratic administration, has uh, targeted their business climate as um, a, a improving their business climate as uh, the most important goal uh, over the next few years. Um, uh, within the last year, they reviewed um, every single regulation on the books. They decided that about a, f a quarter of them uh, would be eliminated uh, and found that they were unnecessary. Another quarter um, were um, good. And, and the other half, uh, over the next year, they will continue to review those and improve them um, to um, improve the um, small business environment and certainly uh, the corporate environment across the whole. Um, so I think at a micro level, um, you know, uh, when it comes to economic development, uh, Groton and New London have no reason to, um, uh, and this whole region, quite frankly, have no reason uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, s uh, still struggling to come out of recession. Um, what is it? Nearly only 80 percent of the jobs have been recovered uh, since the recession, almost 10 years ago now. Um, so th these are not. Uh, these are problems that we must confront. I think certainly electric boats growth where uh, we can, um, you know, Groton will be the beneficiary of at least 800 jobs um, and in the long run, uh, thousands upon thousands as a result of um, electric boat now um, uh, beginning to build their o uh, Ohio replacement submarines. And so that represents an enormous opportunity for Groton. And I think Grosso Tech and, and certainly uh, Three Rivers play a critical function in uh, educating uh, the next generation of uh, workers um, uh, that will certainly work there. Um, and those are um, high, well-paying jobs and, um, you know, high-value jobs. And quite frankly, a lot of those folks will, um, by the time when they retire, will be able to retire here and be able to support their family on those incomes. So we have to take advantage of that opportunity. And I, I certainly think at the state level, we need to look at improving the business climate by cutting red tape and certainly by not increasing taxes anymore. Uh, which is tough, and I know it's going to be incredibly tough uh, next year when we're facing, a, again, a $2.7 billion budget deficit, but we must refrain from it or we do risk le a GE or Pfizer uh, leaving. Okay. Uh, before we get to another question, just I wanted to give you a chance to respond, Mr. De La Cruz, to the point raised by uh, Representative Bumgardner that um, New York, Massachusetts, they've seen triple the job recovery that Connecticut has uh, since the last recession. So. Uh, is it really fair to kind of categorize it as a north-south issue wage-wise? Because other states face the same challenges Connecticut does. They seem to be doing far better with job creation. I think, I think they, we're, we're the little brother in between these two big states. And I think they get, they're going to get attention, especially uh, the movement of a lot of, a lot of high-tech jobs. Uh, the millennials don't want to mow a lawn. They want to they live in a spot where they're, you know, in a city where they can get on a train. Uh, the way we solve that, and, I, and it's been a dream of mine here locally forever, is we have tracks that go north and south of the river. If they connected all of our major attractions and employers, that may, that may bring up business for us. Moves like that will make us more like Boston. Uh, and, and are we ever going to be Boston? No, but we do need a sense of place here. Uh, that's why I'm so proud of my work that, you know, when, we got on, when I got elected in 14, we went right to regulations, right to red tape. Uh, we came on, uh, it was a, we were democrat democratically elected, the first 5-4 uh, advantage for Democrats in Groton in over 30 years. And then those two years with the help, I mean, Bob Frank really powered it. Uh, but we were able to get, uh, you know, a, a, an outside consultant, which hadn't been done before in Groton. And they came in and did some, some research and, on, and made us look inside ourselves as Groton as a community. And, and the results are incredible. Uh, came up with millennials not wanting these big lawns. They wanted housing that connected them to trains. Maybe they don't want a car. They want a bike to drive to work. Uh, those were all things that we didn't know. We also didn't know eight out of 10 people leave Groton every single day after they get in their car or after working at EB. Uh, and we want to change that dynamic uh, and, and really want to ride that wave. And hopefully, I think that's something that we, we're going to be able to do. Uh, with with the, the work we did early, without before the EB announcement, we knew there was a problem. We had lost that $1.3 million when the Pfizer took their building down. And, and I will remind you, I think uh, GE left because, and I talked to a lot of people that, that were close to it, they, they wanted to go to Boston. What, what I don't like about the whole move is how, how we, corporations have kind of turned us into one big flea market. Uh, you, you know, hey, we're thinking of moving and everyone's lifting up all this money. Here, come here, come here. Well. You know, we, we, we hashtag Boston strong, didn't we? 
we made we we helped we had our contr- contribution to that that tunnel. It was a seven billion dollar federal project, the Big Dig. Connecticut's contribution was probably in the hundreds of millions, maybe two two hundred million after the after we sent it to Washington and they sent it somewhere else. You know, to me, how was that? How was that fair? You know, you got these big cities that we've propped up and we've helped. And now when it's time to take a company, we're, we're fighting like it's a flea market. And the money that we gave them for their tunnel is used to buy them from Connecticut. It, so I have this fairness gene in my head. And I always look at, you know, how would that work? And if we were NFL teams and we took Tom Brady and we had a new team in Hartford, we would owe them an awful lot of money and an awful lot of draft picks. And it just doesn't seem fair, I guess. I don't know. But it's maybe a, a different view than anybody else has. But it's one thing that bothers me. And we never really performed an exit interview with them. And to me, one of your largest companies leaves your state. I think the legislator should have took it up and had them come in and do a complete interview, a forensic interview of why they left. So we don't right now, it sounds like we're throwing stuff up in the air. It was taxes, taxes, taxes. And the more and more people I talked to, it was more about a connected community. And again, like you mentioned, being close to colleges. So uh, those you can't win back, possibly. But again, you, you should find out why they left and, and, and make a case for why they why we could have kept them next time. All right. We're going to get to some more questions yep, here. Sorry. We're blowing through our hour. And that's okay. We've had a good discussion on a lot of these issues. Um, the next question is from David Collins, and it's to Representative Bumgardner. 